If you're struggling with opening a container or a jar, don't exert yourself too much. Just run the lid under hot water for half a minute and then dry it for a better grip and see how it magically opens. If you're following a recipe that calls for both garlic and onions, add onions first. When you see they're almost translucent, that's the perfect moment to add garlic. Garlic will cook faster than onions, so if you put both of these products in a pan at the same time, the garlic will burn and your meal won't taste as good. You're a fan of avocados? Here's how you can easily check if one is ripe or not. Just take a look at its tail. If you can pull it out without any difficulties, the avocado is good to eat. If you can't do it easily, better leave it for a couple of days since it's not ripe yet. Here's how you can tell if an egg is fresh or not. Break it and check the yolk. If you can see that it has a clear circle of white surrounding it and is located in the middle, you have a fresh egg. The yolk is supposed to be voluminous too. If it's flat, it's better not to eat the egg. If you see that the white part doesn't have clear borders and your egg spreads around, the chances are it's spoiled. To tell the quality of your eggs, put a raw one while it's still in the shell into a bowl of water. If the egg remains on the bottom, you're good to go. If one of its sides comes closer to the water surface, your egg is not fresh, but you can still eat it. But if it floats, it's not fresh enough to consume. Brushing your teeth in the morning and before you go to bed doesn't have to be the same process. It's important to brush your teeth in the morning, but more so that you have fresh breath. But in the evening, you should brush your teeth more thoroughly because that's how you can prevent bacteria from breeding and protect your gums and teeth. Speaking of bad breath, want to know a good trick to fight it in no time? Cucumber slices. If you don't have a mint within reach, simply eat a slice of cucumber to fix this problem. When you buy natural peanut butter, store it upside down. That way, it won't separate into solids and oils as much. And you'll bring the oils to the top, which is why the peanut butter will be easier to mix. When you put something down for a while, comment it out loud. For example, I've put my phone on the floor right next to my bed. When you do this, you engage multiple parts of your brain, including the language centers, and create a more vivid memory. That way, you'll be less likely to forget about it. You can do the same when you, for example, blow out a candle, unplug your hair straightener, turn off your stove burners, or take your keys, wallet, and other stuff when you leave the house. You'll get rid of many of those moments of doubt that make you wonder if you really did those things. If you visit your friend and bring along something you don't want to forget when you leave, just put it next to your car keys. That's something you definitely can't leave without. If it's hard for you to make a decision, flip a coin. It's not really about letting it decide for you, but while you're waiting to see the result, your mind will automatically start thinking about the outcome you really want, but perhaps can't admit out loud. You're in the supermarket and want to know if the pumpkin you're holding is good or not. Just knock on it. Does it sound as if it's empty inside? That's a good sign. Meanwhile, on the outside, it should be solid. Sometimes we dispose of foods that are still good to consume, like yogurt that's become layered. You know that layer of liquid on the top? That's just whey that contains nutrients. Stir your yogurt to make it smooth because it's still good to eat. When you're buying chicken, check if there's liquid around it. It's better when it doesn't have it. For instance, if you take some frozen chicken out of the freezer and see a lot of ice around the piece, it's better not to eat it. You're moving into a new apartment or house? Set up your bedroom first. Buy a bed before anything else. When you're exhausted after carrying your stuff around and cleaning the whole day, you'll just want to have a comfortable place to rest. Here's a trick that will help you figure out if your coconut oil is adulterated. Leave it in the fridge for half an hour. Coconut oil becomes solid at low temperatures. Adulterant oils detach and you can see them as a separate layer. When you want to check if an onion has some mold, just take a look at what's under the first layer of peel. Do you see stains that look as if the peel has faded? Mold. Better avoid buying this vegetable. Or make sure to remove all that mold if you've already got it. You can determine whether a lemon is ripe or not by eye. If its skin is smooth and has a rich yellow color, it's ripe. A greenish tint, as well as a pale yellow color, tells you it's ready to be used yet. This one's for coffee lovers. If you really want to enjoy your overall coffee experience, it's way better to buy beans and grind them yourself. 
or ask if a salesperson can do it in the store when you buy your coffee. That's the best way to make sure that the product is really made without any extra additions that can be present in a regular ground coffee. If you're looking for a simple way to separate yolks from egg whites, try this. Take a clean and empty plastic water bottle, crack an egg into a bowl, squeeze the bottle over the yolk, and slowly release it. This way, you'll create a vacuum which will make the yolk slide into the bottle. Ta-da! It's separated from the white, just like that. Let's say you lost an earring or some other small item in the house. A vacuum cleaner will help. Just don't forget to pop a stocking over its head. This way, the item won't get lost in the dust and dirt inside the vac's bag. You want to take your favorite lotion with you on a trip, but it takes up too much space? Try using a contact lens case. It doesn't need a lot of space, and it's a perfect solution for short trips. A hair straightener is a surprisingly good tool when it comes to ironing collars, especially if you're not a fan of regular ironing. When you want to check if your batteries are good or bad, just drop them on the table from approximately 6 inches. If they bounce once and fall right over, they're good to go. If they bounce around more than that, they're either done or on the way out. If your razor doesn't have a plastic cap, just use a binder clip to cover it and to protect the rest of your stuff if you're packing it with some sensitive items or materials. Nail polish is a simple yet effective way to differentiate your keys, especially if they're all similar. Finally, you don't have to try each of them before getting to the right one. When you're reheating leftovers in a microwave, space out a circle in the middle of your dish. This way, your food will heat up more evenly. Straw is a cool tool to remove strawberry stems. Don't you think? A muffin tin definitely comes in handy when you want to serve different condiments for your barbecue. Plus, it will save you some time with the dishes later. You must have noticed those lines on some kinds of chips. For one thing, they help with the distribution of spices and seasonings. In other words, all those substances that make your chips taste like cheese are mostly stored inside the lines. Plus, the lines make chips crunchier. Some cars have a tiny coffee cup sign on their dashboard. It's the vehicle's anti-drowsiness mechanism. There are manufacturers that equip their cars with a drowsiness detection system. It analyzes the speed, wheel angle, and lane deviations to figure out if it's time for the driver to take a break. If it is, the vehicle makes several audio signals and the coffee cup sign starts to flash. Some plastic milk containers have dents on their sides. These dents serve several purposes. For one thing, when milk spoils, this process usually causes swelling and high pressure buildup inside the container. That's when the dent comes in handy. It pops out and doesn't let the jug blow up. Plus, if you decide to freeze the milk, it will expand like any other liquid. And then again, the indentation will pop out and prevent the container from breaking inside your freezer. You might have wondered why jerry cans have three handles. It's a clever designer move. This way, if you carry the container alone, you can use only the central handle to distribute the weight evenly. But if your friend wants to help you out, each of you can grab the side handle. The first jeans had a problem. Workers and miners, who were the original jeans wearers, put too much pressure on the poor piece of clothing. As a result, the seams couldn't withstand the stress and tore. Tiny metal studs were invented to prevent this from happening. Sticky notes come off relatively easily because their adhesive is spread out across the paper unevenly, in small blobs and only some of these blobs touch the surface of whatever you've stuck the note on. That's why when you unstick a post-it and attach it to something else, it still works, until all the glue gets used or covered with dirt. Soda bottles are always filled in such a way that there's some space between the liquid and the cap. That's because soda contains carbon dioxide. It's a gas that can expand once a bottle is heated. If there's no gap in the bottle, it can break because of the pressure building inside. Also, when you open your drink, the gases go out in the form of bubbles, and the drink is likely to overflow. 
the gap helps with this problem too. Dental floss is super useful for your teeth, but it might be rather hard to operate. It regularly slips out of your fingers and tangles. To avoid these problems, tear off a piece of dental floss and tie its two ends together. It'll be much easier to use and won't hurt your fingers. Now, about those horizontal lines on plastic bottles. They help hold bottles up. Some bottles are produced from soft plastic. Without the lines, they wouldn't keep their shape. Instead, they would twist easily or even break. The soft round part under a soda bottle cap keeps the carbonation from escaping. Without it, your pop would go flat in no time, probably even before you buy it. If you don't have anywhere to put a toothpick after using it, break off its flat end at the first groove and place it on the table. Now you can balance the used portion of your toothpick on the groove part so that it doesn't have to touch the table. You can also make a makeshift stand for disposable chopsticks. They have a sort of lump on one side. Break that lump off before you split the pair. Now, when you want to take a sushi break, just place the stick on this stand. Donuts are shaped like rings because otherwise they might get overdone at the edges but uncooked and gooey inside. With a hole in the center, both the outside and the inside get ready at the same time. Ever notice that layer of clear fluid in gel pens? It's called the ink follower or stopper fluid. The gel in such pens contains pigment particles dissolved in a polymer solution. The gel should be thick enough to keep the pigment particles suspended, but also thin enough to flow first onto the ball and then the paper. The main task of the stopper fluid is to be a barrier to prevent the gel from evaporating or leaking out. Without this transparent fluid, your gel pen wouldn't function. The fluid always stays in one position and doesn't get dissolved with the gel. Neither does it move backward or flow out of the pen. Some button-down shirts have a button hidden on the back of the collar. Its main purpose is to prevent the tie from sticking out from under the collar. As for that locker loop on the back, you can use it to hang the shirt on a hook to avoid wrinkling it. Outer rings and zipper sliders, especially when two sliders are used together, are added so that you can connect them with a lock and keep sticky fingers away. Most ambulance cars have this word printed on the front of the vehicle. That's the word ambulance backward. It's written in reverse so that the driver in front of the ambulance can see the word properly in their rear view mirror. Then they can move out of the way and let the ambulance pass. Escalator brushes serve an important safety purpose. You might have heard that most accidents happen after people get their bags or clothes stuck in escalators because they stand too close to the sides. But when there are nylon brushes on both sides, you can't but keep your feet away from the escalator's skirt panels. The result? No accidents. The side holes in sneakers are for laces. Since sneakers were originally invented for basketball players, this interesting design allowed them to accommodate any player's foot. They just needed to lace their sneakers in the most comfortable way for them. The holes in the bottoms of your earphones allow air to circulate up and through the speakers. It helps to increase low frequencies, making the bass sound deeper. The quality of the sound also becomes much better. Ever been stranded with a cup of applesauce but no spoon at hand? But each snack pack already has a built-in spoon. Several twists of the foil lid and here you go. Diamond slits on backpacks were originally placed only on traveler bags. Their purpose was to carry ropes. These days, you can find such slits on almost every backpack. Why not use them to carry a bottle of water? an umbrella, or a pair of sneakers. Highlighters are filled with a special semi-transparent fluorescent ink that can glow in dim light. 
yellow and light green hues are the most popular because they don't prevent you from seeing the text after black and white photocopying. Photocopiers perceive yellow and light green marks as almost non-existent and don't print them. A stop sign has an octagonal shape to help drivers recognize it easily, even if they see it from the back. When the signs weren't reflective yet, this shape prevented drivers from confusing the stop sign with any other at night. The number 57 on a Heinz ketchup bottle has nothing to do with the product label. The truth is that the place with the numbers is the very sweet spot you should tap to get the ketchup flowing. So stop hitting the bottom of your sauce bottle and hit 57. Lots of private houses have triangular shaped roofs because this allows rain, snow, and fallen leaves to slide off the slope. If all this stuff piled up on top of your house, one day your roof would collapse. Airplane windows have rounded edges, and that's a crucial safety measure. It prevents aircraft accidents. Weak spots are usually situated in the corners. If airplane windows were square or rectangular, each of them would have four potential weak spots. Under pressure, they would collapse. Are the letters SSSS on your boarding pass a reason to worry? What's much more dangerous than turbulence? Should you really be the first to board the plane? You're about to figure it out. You might have noticed that most planes have blue seats. There's no mystery here. Airlines opt for this color because it's considered to have a calming effect. This color supposedly puts passengers at ease and helps even the most nervous flyers to relax. But there's also another, more practical reason. Stains, dirt, and scrapes are less visible on dark blue fabric. Never throw your boarding pass away in a public place. It contains tons of your sensitive information, including your name and frequent flyer number. This, in turn, may allow someone else to check your future bookings, change your seat, or even cancel your flights. So the best way to deal with the boarding pass for a flight you've already boarded is to take it home and feed it through a paper shredder. By the way, if you ever see the letters SSSS or S on your boarding pass, get ready for additional security checks. Instead of these letters, there may be a checkerboard pattern. Anyway, if you have any of these marks, your carry-on luggage can also undergo a thorough inspection. Why might they choose you for secondary screening? Some of the criteria are making a one-way reservation or paying cash for your ticket. In some cases, the selection is absolutely random. Look, your gate is open and the boarding is started. Wait, where are you running? There's no need to hurry. The trick experienced globetrotters use is always board last. For one thing, you don't have to waste time standing in line. Then, there are fewer people on the jetway and in the aisle, and you spend less time on the plane. No one is going to take your seat anyway. There's one exception though. If you have a bulky carry-on bag, it may make more sense not to board last. Otherwise, the chances are high that all the overhead bin space will be occupied by the time you reach your seat. And then your bag may end up in another part of the plane, and you'll have to wait till the other passengers disembark before you get to your luggage. Duh! Before takeoff and landing, flight attendants usually flip a small switch on the bathroom door. This prevents it from flying open when it's not supposed to. With the same ease, a flight attendant can open the door when someone is inside. Look, they only need to lift the lavatory sign and move the knob into the unlocked position. Pilots don't worry about turbulence. That's because they know that there is a thing way more dangerous than any turbulence. It's an updraft. In most cases, turbulence only drops you a couple of feet down, even though it might feel as if you're falling from the top of the Empire State Building. If the turbulence is strong enough for the pilots to ask flight attendants to sit down, the plane can go 10 to 20 feet down. The most extreme white-knuckle turbulence is super rare. But an updraft is a big air mass, part of a storm or some other weather phenomenon, moving upwards. Pilots don't see updrafts on their radars at night, and when a plane hits one, it feels like driving over a huge speed bump at 500 miles per hour. 
An updraft is also extremely treacherous because it can push an aircraft upward to dangerous altitudes. Modern planes have a special system that detects other aircraft, mountains, and different solid objects in their path. Ten miles away from another plane, and a voice in the cockpit starts chanting, Traffic! Traffic! Five miles closer, and the same voice begins to give pilots the directions. Airplanes can operate with one engine, even during takeoff and landing. Both engines failing simultaneously is almost unheard of. But even then, a plane wouldn't drop from the sky like a rock. Pilots would have up to 20 minutes to find a suitable place to land. The way the cabin is pressurized has a great effect on your taste buds. You lose up to 30% of your ability to taste sweet and salty things. In other words, it's not that airplane food isn't tasty, you just don't feel its flavor. That's also the main reason why airline catering companies add extra salt and spices to the dishes they cook. But you know what may help you? Noise-canceling earphones. For some reason, that probably has a scientific explanation. Cutting off all that noise around can help your taste buds. Each of those dings you hear during the flight has its own meaning. In most airlines, a Boeing soon after takeoff indicates that the landing gear is getting retracted. Three dings in a row means more urgency than just one. A high-low ringtone informs crew members that their colleague needs them in another part of the plane. Three low chimes means some serious turbulence ahead. Crew members are supposed to put away meal carts, take their seats, and fasten their seatbelts. If you're a nervous flyer, pick a seat in the middle of the cabin. Turbulence mostly affects the front and rear parts of the cabin. The middle section, which is over the wings, doesn't shake so much. Pilots and co-pilots eat different meals. The reason for this precaution is very simple. Imagine both pilots having the same dish and getting food poisoning. In this case, neither of them will be able to control the plane. If they still want to have the same dish and won't agree to have anything else, there's a safety net. Pilots don't have their meals at the same time. If one pilot ate the dish and still feels okay several hours later, the other pilot can brave their meal as well. What would you say when asked about the filthiest place on a plane? Nope, that's not the toilet seat. It's not even in the bathroom. Flight attendants warn that you should be particularly careful with headrests, seat pockets, tray tables, and seat belts. Experiments have shown that one-third of all seat belts have yeast and mold on them. Most tray tables are covered with bacteria. Seat pockets are extremely filthy too, but headrests are the dirtiest of them all. In most cases, flight attendants don't have enough time to change or disinfect them in between flights. If your captain announces they're finishing some paperwork, it means they're busy revising the flight itinerary or waiting for the ground staff to prepare the flight logbook. That's a journal that contains the official record of a journey. Some places, especially those flying long distances, have secret bedrooms for crew members to catch some shut-eye. These bedrooms, called crew rest compartments, are located either at the back of the plane or behind the cockpit. Such a compartment can have up to 10 comfortable beds where flight attendants can have a rest. Plane windows are made of super strong plexiglass that can easily cope with high speeds. And the window panes are shaped in a special way so that the high pressure inside the cabin pushes them against the aircraft body. In other words, plane windows are very unlikely to get broken. Once upon a time, plane windows were square but the pressure built up in the corners of such windows, making them ultimate weak spots. This means that each square window had four weak spots. This made them likely to crash under the enormous stress of high altitudes. Luckily, making airplane windows curved solved this problem once and forever. Such a shape distributes the pressure and reduces the likelihood of cracks or any other damage. Planes regularly get struck by lightning at least once a year or once per 1,000 hours of flight time. These days, it's totally safe. The electric charge simply runs through the aircraft's aluminum shell. It doesn't cause the plane any damage. But did you know that airplanes not only get hit by lightning, 
but they also trigger it? When an aircraft is flying through a cloud, the friction between its fuselage and the air creates static electricity. Sometimes, it can cause lightning. Decades ago, no one would ever imagine keeping a stick in their pocket that could hold hundreds of gigabytes. We've come a long way since then and got used to USBs transferring our files from device to device with ease. In 2000, two major companies developed and sold the first USB flash drives 1.0, which snowballed into USB 2.0, 3.0, Type-C, and so on. Physically, they can endure rough treatment and won't get damaged easily, especially if you get proper protection. By design, USBs are almost perfect. So perfect that you always make the mistake of inserting it in the wrong way. Admit it, the two square holes are used to help the USB secure its position once it's inside the port. It's not strong enough to keep it stuck, but strong enough to do its job. You can protect your USB with proper encryption. This means that if anyone gets their hands on them, they won't be able to read them. Encrypted files end up being scrambled into gibberish of a series of letters and numbers instead of comprehensive words to anyone who tries to read it. The file is only accessible if someone gets their hands on that USB. But if you're using certain online services like messaging or emailing, then encryption is simply not enough. Sure, the person on the other end can't read the contents of the work, but the hosting website can. This is where end-to-end -end encryption comes in. That means any information that goes in and out is, again, scrambled into gibberish to anyone who is in the way of your traffic, including the hosting service. Cloud storage has taken the world by storm. You can now save everything that's on your desktop to the internet and access that data across multiple devices. All you need is an email and password and boom, you're safe and have all your files in one place. Cloud storage isn't data floating up in the clouds, but, less excitingly, servers that physically store data. They're like regular computers, just minus the monitors for viewing. These servers take up a lot of money. That's why you normally have to pay for their services. The servers are placed in data centers all around the world where third-party companies manage them. It's like getting remote access to a computer. The servers include a master control server, backup server, and a linked supply of servers operating to maintain a good quality service. The more money you pay, the better the server your data will be stored in. In the realm of computers, you just can't delete something to be gone forever. Whatever file you want to remove is already present in the hard disk as electrical impulses. And, depending on your gadget, it will be disposed of in a recycle bin or the garbage. That isn't to say that it isn't still there. It simply implies that the file has been moved to a different folder from which you can easily recover it. So, if you're worried about accidentally deleting a crucial document you've been working on for weeks, don't panic. It's not gone for good. But if your device breaks, then all your data is lost. If you own a device that has Windows 10, then you've probably been shutting down thinking that your computer or laptop is completely off. This is not the case. Windows 10 doesn't actually shut down, but goes into a state of hibernation. It keeps your app saved for you to recover. The proper way to shut it down is by resetting it. Windows operating system is known for being user-friendly with all the commands displayed in front of you. But for computer whiz kids, know that you can open the search bar and type CMD for the command prompt. It looks just like a bunch of random characters, but this is where you can achieve a lot with your device. If you don't like the black window, you can always change the color of your suiting. Once you launch the command prompt window, right-click on the title bar and then on Properties. Another window will open which has the option of choosing colors. You can pick the colors you want for the background and text or fix the opacity for the CMD window. This is easy mode. The real work is typing commands in the window. If you want to look for all your drivers on your Windows 10 device, then type in this command in the window. Don't forget to add spaces. The list of servers will magically pop up on your screen. This is a good way to get to the bottom of your issue, instead of searching for them manually. You can also hide specific folders on your computer through the command prompt by typing this command and pressing enter. Of course, you'll have to type in the folder you want to hide, and poof, it's gone. 
The non-tech way of doing this is by opening the properties pane in the folder and clicking on the checkbox that shows hidden. While this is indeed the easy way of hiding your folders, it's not the most effective. You can simply write show hidden files and folders and every checkbox you check will be visible again. The command prompt isn't all about business. You can try playing a game there to pass the time. Don't expect a AAA kind with realistic graphics and epic gameplay. Type this command and you'll be transported into the game via text. This game will allow you to create characters and engage in this imaginary world. Google Chrome is one of the most popular browsers on the net, but you can also play a text-based game there, just like in the command prompt. First press Ctrl plus Shift plus J to open the console. Then type Text Adventure into the search box. Don't freak out, you just open the sort of a back end of the page. Next, click on the box that says Console. You'll be greeted with a text that will ask you if you want to play a game. Type Yes and you'll instantly begin. They'll give you some basic commands which are easy to follow and an opening premise of the journey. If you're looking for something a little more contemporary, then get ready to play some solitaire. No worries, you don't have to type some command to play it. All you need to do is type solitaire in the search bar, and you're there. You can play the exciting game of solitaire in your web browser. And when you get bored, you can play the classic game Pac-Man. If you're from the generation of the classic bulky phones, then this next game will bring back all those memories of your childhood. Open Google and type snake, and there you go. When the internet is down, you can play the dinosaur game in your browser window while you're impatiently waiting for the Wi-Fi to come back. This game is very simple. After pressing enter, you just have to hit the space bar to jump over obstacles. And at a certain point, you'll have the option to duck down, which will make it even more challenging. Even without Wi-Fi, you can still have a good time. You can pause the game whenever you want by pressing the Alt key or F11. You can just click on your screen to continue the game at any time. Windows 11 has some cool hidden features that are very useful, like adjusting the volume for each individual app. You can go to Settings and click on System. Hit the Sound section. This will bring you to all the sound levels and the master switch. Copy-pasting is so essential to our everyday workflow that Windows 11 decided to take it to a whole other level with clipboard history. This option allows you to save your copied texts in one designated area, which you can access anytime. And the good news is that this option is also available on Windows 10. Just click on the Windows key plus V and you're good to go. If you have too many windows opened on Windows 11, you can grab the window that you want to keep and shake it. It will minimize all the remaining windows in the background so that you can have a pleasant, productive workflow. Oh wait, it's happening now! Most kitchen shears have metal plier-like teeth in the middle, between the handle grips. They can help you crack nuts, grab shells, and release other tough products. You can also open jars and bottles, or remove herb stems with their help. You can keep your cold meals cold and your food fresh by making a DIY ice pack. Take a sponge and fill it with water. Then put it in a plastic bag and leave it in the freezer. Once the sponge is frozen, it'll stay this way for a long time. Keep in mind that you should use a watertight bag and a fresh sponge. If you turn over a Tupperware container, you'll see some symbols. They'll inform you if you can put the container in the dishwasher if it can be microwaved or frozen. You may even find out how you can recycle the thing. Staplers actually have two modes, not just one. There's a metal plate on the lower part of the device, which helps bend the staples inward after they've pierced the paper. What many people don't know is that you can turn this plate around to switch from the staple mode to the pinning one. The pinning setting is for temporary fastening. The staples bend outward making them easier to remove when necessary and damaging the paper less, too. When you take a sip from a coffee cup closed with a lid, the air pressure inside the cup drops. That's why the air from the outside tries to push into the cup. The tiny hole on the lid allows some air to enter this way, 
and the liquid can go out of the main hole more smoothly. It's often hard to figure out how much detergent you need to clean your laundry well, but not go overboard. Pay attention to the cap of your detergent. It usually has a marker indicating how much product you need to add to your laundry. Or there might be an instruction on the bottle. It'll let you know how to measure the detergent. You can use most screwdrivers together with a wrench to create more torque. Just place the wrench over the handle of the screwdriver. This way, you'll need to apply a lot less force than before. You'll also be able to get to hard-to-reach areas more easily. The hole in a ruler can be useful if you want to hang the device on a hook. You can also place a pencil tip in this hole if you need to draw a perfect circle. Coffee stirring sticks have holes in them because those help reduce the resistance from your drink. This way, they can stir sugar much more effectively. Such a design also makes these plastic sticks tougher and prevents them from bending in hot water. And since stirring sticks are partially hollow, less plastic is used during their production. Some boxes of chocolates have little dents in between the holes for candies. If you push such a dent, the chocolates surrounding it will pop out of their compartments. The small bumps on the F and J keys on the keyboard help people find the right keys without looking down. It's especially convenient for those who use touch typing. The rumble strips on the sides of the road are placed there to alert drivers who doze off behind the wheel. When their tires move over these strips, the noise and vibration work like an alarm clock. The black grate on a microwave is called a Faraday shield. It contains the electromagnetic energy inside the oven and protects the exterior from radiation. The grate also speeds up the heating process. Bottles have long necks so that your drink stays cool longer. Hold the neck, not the bottle itself, and your drink won't warm up. Dimples on the surface of a golf ball increase its lift and reduce air resistance. It means that the ball can go further. The dimples don't have to be spherical. They can be hexagonal or have any other shape. There's a tab on the bottom of your rearview mirror. If you push it back during nighttime driving, the headlights of the car moving behind yours won't be so blinding. If you're driving during the day, pull the tab forward. You can peel an orange more effectively if you cut into the peel at the top and bottom first. Then make a slit on one side and just pull the peel open. Headrests in cars are detachable. You can use one to break the windows if you get stuck in your vehicle. But by smashing the glass, you can easily hurt yourself. So try sliding one of the prongs in between the window pane and the door. Then pull the headrest towards yourself. The window will shatter. But hey, I'd try the door lock first. Solo cups used at barbecue parties can help you measure liquids. The bottom line equals one ounce. The second line means you've poured five ounces, and the third line means 12 ounces. Sneakers were originally invented for basketball players, and since they needed to lace their shoes in the most comfortable way, side holes were invented. Those helped players lace their sneakers in any way they liked, and they accommodate anyone's foot. Little buttons on your jeans are called rivets. They were originally placed there to prevent the seams from ripping. In the past, mostly miners and other workers wore jeans. That's why this item of clothing had to be particularly durable. And even though these days jeans aren't under such stress, the tradition of using rivets still remains. A big toothy spoon comes in handy when you need to pull your spaghetti out of the pot. And the hole in the middle of this spoon can help you measure portions. One portion equals as many dry noodles as you can fit into the hole. Sometimes, pre-rinsing dishes may lead to your dishwasher cleaning them worse than it could. Special sensors inside modern dishwashers can perceive how dirty your plates are. And after that, they send a controlled jet of water to wash all that stuff off. The only thing you're actually supposed to do is remove solid food from your plates and stack them up properly. Ribbed ketchup containers that they give you at fast food restaurants can get a bit bigger. Just pull the ribs outward and your container will house much more sauce. While using a plunger on a clogged kitchen sink or toilet, make sure you've got the right tool. 
If it has a standard bowl-shaped rubber head, it's perfect for flat surfaces, such as a sink or a tub. But the one designed for toilet pipes has a narrower head. The hole near the rim of your bathroom sink is there to prevent overflows. Thanks to it, all excess water goes into the siphon. Plus, it helps your sink drain faster. The hole gives the air gathered in the siphon somewhere to escape. The hole in a lollipop stick can save your life. If the stick gets stuck in someone's mouth, the hole will prevent this person from choking. But the original reason for it is to simply not let the candy run off the stick. During production, the liquid treat is poured on top of the stick. The stick is hollow inside, so the candy gets inside it from both the top and the side, through that exact hole. And when it gets solid, it keeps perfectly on the plastic tube. Most padlocks have a tiny hole on the bottom. It's needed to drain water from the lock and avoid corrosion. By the way, it's the best place to lubricate a padlock. Just put a drop of oil there and the key will turn much easier. If you don't see a hole on the bottom, the lock is supposed to be used inside. Instead of opening a banana at the stem, turn it upside down and peel it from the bottom. It opens much more easily this way. A utility knife can serve you much longer than you might think. Look at the blade carefully. It's made of parallel sections. Once the knife gets blunt, you should break off the top section. You can do it with the help of the cap you'll find at the bottom of the instrument. In no time, you'll have a sharp blade again. The stripes on headphone jacks keep the wires insulated from one another. One stripe means the headset has a mono signal. Two stripes indicate you'll have stereo sound. And three stripes means the headset also has a built-in microphone. You can usually find some silica gel in bags, shoes, and many other things you buy. This gel absorbs excess moisture. Don't throw it away. Every time your shoes get wet, put some packets of silica gel inside them. It's very convenient to use bread tags to organize your cords. Just take a bread tag and several cords and clip them together. You can also write notes on these tags and use them as reminders. You've probably noticed that train and bus seats are covered in fabrics with weird patterns. Have any idea why? Well, they use these patterns to cover any germs and stains on the seats. The brighter the color and the more patterned it is, the harder it will be for passengers to notice any stains and get grossed out. Also, the patterns are usually so ugly that no one even wants to look at them for long enough to spot any stains. So yeah, the pattern is there to make you look away. And if you look, to make it less noticeable. No bus will ever have plain white seats, that's a guarantee. Just a few more bus-related questions to answer. Like, why don't buses have seat belts? Buses are overall way safer than cars because they were designed this way. The idea behind this is called compartmentalization, meaning that the seats have high backs that absorb energy. The seats are also placed close to one another, so there's less space to move in case of an impact. Also, on a bus, the passengers sit pretty high off the ground, and in case of a collision, the force is absorbed by the bus's deck and not by the people inside. On top of that, a bus is way heavier than most other vehicles, and even if there is a collision, it distributes the force way differently than a regular car. Due to its weight, a lot of force is absorbed, and bus passengers don't experience much crush force. So, small and light buses that can't distribute the force as well actually do require seatbelts. And we have to remember that buses drive slowly, which minimizes the risk of an accident overall. We all know that school buses are yellow, but why? It's for visibility reasons. Yellow is one of the most easily recognized colors, and for a human eye, yellow is even more visible than, say, red. So, school buses are yellow to make them more distinctive. Also, yellow is visible in the dark, in fog, and on a rainy day. Actually, the color of the bus isn't really a true yellow. It also has a hint of orange. This shade even has an official name, National School Bus Glossy Yellow. By the way, taxi cabs are yellow for the same reason, to be more visible in any weather conditions. Also, buses have huge steering wheels, and I finally learned why. Buses are bigger than regular cars, and they're also way heavier. 
so it's harder to turn a bus around, and way more strength is required to do so than when you drive a car. A bigger steering wheel that has a bigger radius allows the driver to turn the vehicle more easily, and it requires less force than if the wheel were smaller. Trucks have big steering wheels for the same reason. But have you seen those stuffed toys that some trucks have attached in front of them? Turns out, it's just a way for truck drivers to customize their vehicles. It's like a mascot that speaks about the truck or the driver. It's also a way to communicate to the world that the truck driver isn't all scary and tough, but a soft and harmless person that you shouldn't be afraid of. At least, that's how some truck drivers explain it. In Asia, there's also a belief that road accidents are caused by ghosts, and hanging toys are a way to distract the ghosts from causing harm to the truck. Ever been on a road trip? If you're not the driver, all you have to do is just sit in one place and do basically nothing for hours. Doesn't sound like a hard task, but some people find it terribly exhausting. And because of this, they resent road trips. Why do they get so tired? Well, sitting in a car isn't like sitting in a chair. The brain doesn't relax. Instead, it controls everything that's going on, accounting for movements and making sure that you maintain the right posture. Your brain is constantly working, exchanging bits of information with your muscles, so your body is working. Some people get tired because of this. If you aren't doing much, it doesn't mean that your body isn't doing much. Train rides are way more tolerable, because trains don't stop or change speeds as often as cars do. So the body is more relaxed, and train trips are way more tolerable for people who aren't fans of road trips. Another mystery is why it's way harder to stand still in the same spot for 30 minutes in comparison to, for example, walking for 30 minutes. Again, it sounds like you're not doing anything when you're standing. So why is it so tiring? Well, standing is a pretty hard task for your body. When standing, the muscles in your legs work very hard to support the mass of your whole body. If you're standing, there are not many muscles working, and only a few of them have to do all the work. When walking, there are more muscles working at the same time, so it's easier. Also, when standing, both of your legs are working without stopping. But when walking, each of them gets a tiny break each time you step using the other leg. Why is it that the same book can have different covers? There are several reasons for this. First, the cover may vary because of the target audience. An edition of a book that is being marketed to older people is usually different from the edition aimed at younger people with the one for younger people usually being brighter and cuter. The cover can also depend on the country the book is being sold in, trying to attract as many buyers as possible based on the tastes of the population. Next, books vary from edition to edition. At first, a book is printed in hardcover in small quantities to see how it'll do on the market. If the book is a relative success, there is another edition printed, often in trade paperback. The design of the cover is usually updated with every edition, also, if a book has a movie based on it, there is usually another edition that follows. This edition will take advantage of the movie and use a movie scene as the cover, making it recognizable for people who saw and liked the movie and encouraging them to buy a copy of the book. Most books are printed on yellowish paper, and few have plain white pages. But why is that? Unless it's a mass-market paperback edition with paper that's the same quality as a newspaper, meaning bad. It's done with good quality paper. Don't let the yellow hue confuse you. It's usually called cream, and it's a preference for any book because it's less tiring on the reader's eyes. The plain white paper is bleached, and it reflects a lot of light, so it can be exhausting to read for a long time. So, that yellowish paper is the best paper, and publishers regularly use it. Another thing about books is those blank pages they often have at the very end. Their number depends on the number of pages in the book. The thing is that books are printed in signature. A signature is a group of pages that printers fold together and cut to make a book. A signature can have a different number of book pages, with the minimum being four and then with other numbers divisible by four. So a book that is 300 pages long in total will fit in perfectly and there will be no blank pages left. But if a book needs 303 pages, it'll need an additional signature, and the extra pages will remain blank, often marked with the word notes or with the message, this page is intentionally left blank to let the reader know that there's no important information missing. Ever wondered why most doctors have sloppy handwriting? 
No, there's no class in medical colleges on bad handwriting. The reason why it's so common is that doctors are always in a rush, and they write as fast as possible to keep their momentum, so there's no time to care about writing nicely. Also, keep in mind that you're not the only person who they write a prescription for over the course of a day. Doctors do a lot of paperwork, working for 10 hours straight, and they're just too tired most of the time to give you a properly written note. Have you noticed that most songs, in general, last somewhere between 3 and 4 minutes? Well, originally, songs were being played on a phonograph record player from a vinyl record, which was spinning at 78 revolutions per minute. So, the size of the vinyl record basically determined the length of the song. There were two basic record sizes, a 10-inch one, which had room for about 3 minutes of playtime, and a 12-inch, which could fit a 4-minute song. So, at the beginning of the 20th century, if an artist wanted their song played, they couldn't make it longer than that if they wanted to be able to sell a record. Times have changed, but still, most songs are about 3 to 4 minutes long. The initial reason for sticking to this pattern was also because of radio. If a song was too long, it would either get cut in half or some parts would be left off to make it fit into the 3 to 5 minute radio standard. If an artist wanted the song on the radio, and if they wanted to earn money from it, they'd do their best to make a song that fits the standard so that the whole piece could be played without alterations. Today, even if there are longer songs, a 3-4 to four minute song is now a tradition that artists typically stick to. Metal buttons on jeans, also known as rivets, helped make the pockets more durable when miners would fill them with heavy tools. They're still helpful today, even if you don't store anything heavy in your pockets. Rivets strengthen the seams and make your jeans last longer. These tiny ridges on the letters F and J on a keyboard help us find the correct keys while touch typing. Also, since they're located in the center, they indicate the optimum position for typing. By the way, QWERTY was invented back in the early 1870s, and before that, the first keyboards were piano-like, with two rows of characters in alphabetical order. Don't blame that little lump on your computer cable for irritating you when it gets stuck somewhere for the umpteenth time. This cylinder, shapes and colors may vary, actually helps prevent interference from other signals, like those your phone emits. A hole in the handle of pots and even frying pans is designed as a holder for spoons if it's large enough. This way, sauce or whatever you stir drops back into the pan. As for handles, jerry cans have three of them. It's a smart designer move, so when you carry it alone, you use only the central handle to distribute the weight evenly but your friend wants to help you out, each of you grabs the side handle. A lack of privacy in public bathrooms, I mean that significant gap beneath where standard doors tend to be, is there for a reason. This way, people do their business faster and there are fewer lines. Also, if something goes wrong, it's easy to find a person who needs help. In London, some poles kind of look like street lamps, but there are no bulbs. Well, their official name is stink pipes. And they're a thing of the past now, but they used to come in handy back in the 19th century. These hollow poles would take the air and explosive gases with bad smells up to prevent unwanted consequences. Books are printed on large sheets, so one sheet can fit in four printed pages. If a book has an odd quantity of printed pages, chances are you'll get a blank one for notes or the author's signature. Toothbrush bristles have two secret features. First, they fade over time, so when it gets less bright, you gotta buy a new one. Also, the bristles vary in length, and longer ones on one end can help clean the back teeth better. Toothpaste stripes aren't more than a marketing trick. In the 70s, a leading toothpaste brand introduced a blue stripe, claiming their toothpaste had double action. Solid white toothpaste has the same functions though. Originally, golf balls were smooth. They have a dimpled surface now because players noticed that overused balls with damages flew better than brand new ones. At some point, manufacturers started producing balls with dimples. Windshield black dots, or frits, help dispense the sun glaring right into your eyes. This frame keeps the UV rays away and helps the glass heat up evenly, so it's sort of sunglasses for your car. The tab on the rearview mirror wasn't meant to hold your air freshener. It's a tumbler between day and night mode. It keeps the glare from other cars at bay, so you can't be distracted by headlights behind you. 
Colored dots on chip bags help manufacturers control the package color and show what ink color was used on the package. No big deal. Your microwave probably has a silence mode. Press 1 or 0 and hold. It might work. Also, there is sometimes a mute button you kept ignoring all this time. Anyway, there are no two identical microwaves, so a manual should come in handy. Grocery cart loops help organize all the stuff in your cart better so you could enjoy your supermarket trip. You don't want to put your brand new fancy white jacket in a cart next to carrots and onions, huh? Fruit stickers know everything about your apple's past. A five-digit number where the first number is 9 is a good sign. It's an organic product. A four-digit number starting with 3 or 4 means it was conventionally farmed. If the number starts with an 8 and there are 5 digits, it's best to leave it on the shelf. Automatic lip liners and eye pencils have a sharpener installed in the package. The lid on the back part of the pencil doesn't only reveal the color. You can pull it out and sharpen up the product. If you don't feel like peeling an orange, cut it on top and bottom. Make a slit on a side and just pull it open. Toothpicks sometimes have several grooves and the section with grooves is a makeshift holder. It's easy to break the toothpick into two parts. The smaller one with the groove can be used to avoid contact with the table. Most tubes are usually sealed with plastic film or foil and opening it with your fingernails isn't the best idea. A point on the ointment tab easily opens even the most safely sealed tube. A dinner jacket has small pockets above regular ones. They're called ticket pockets and gentlemen wearing such jackets can quickly pull the tickets before getting on a train. Yeah, you've heard before that a drawer beneath your oven is there for keeping the food warm if the guests are running late. Hey, you can also slow cook on lower temperatures in that drawer. All the bottles used to be of the same green color once, but it turns out brown ones are way better at blocking UV light. A dollar has its secrets too. A large letter with a rim shows which bank is responsible for issuing this bill. 12 different Federal Reserve banks print all the money, so if you want to know where your money comes from, just look for these small codes. A1. Boston B2. New York C3. Philadelphia D4. Cleveland E5. Richmond F6. Atlanta G7. Chicago H8. St. Louis I9. Minneapolis J10. Kansas City, K11, Dallas, 1112, San Francisco. Rough edges on the dimes aren't just about design. The weight of coins made of precious metal was used to show the coin's actual value. People would shave off the edges, spending the shaving coins with the same value, and melt the edges to make new coins. Small dimples on the bottom of some cups keep them in place on wet surfaces, and it doesn't let the excess water accumulate while it's in a dishwasher. To enjoy fresh and soft peanut butter, store it upside down. This way, the oils don't stay on the bottom all the time and distribute evenly in the jar. Bath foam has a sort of thermoregulatory function. The bubbles keep the water hot so that you can enjoy your bath a bit longer. Disclaimer, it works for acrylic bathtubs only. Those made of metal lose heat rather fast, no matter how much foam you make. A doorknob made of brass, bronze, and some copper alloys has an anti-germ effect because of its metal properties. A small V-patch right at the bottom of the collar helps put on the sweater without losing any shape over time because it's made of a double layer of webbing material, just like waistbands and cuffs. To avoid spilling juice right onto your t-shirt, try pouring it from the other side of the carton. This way, it sloshes less, and it's easy to control. Triangular flaps on small juice cartons can help control unwanted spillage too. If you flip them and use them as handles for the carton, you won't press the package, so the juice won't be squeezed uncontrollably. All the disposable cups look the same. The secret here is the special shape that lets you enjoy your drink easily. The top is always wider for the nose to fit in while you're drinking, and the bottom is always narrower so anyone can hold it even if the hand is small. Also, the width difference allows the cups to stack. You can use a mason jar directly onto the blender with a screw on top and make any shake you want without having to wash the blender jar. The only rule is to not put your device on max. There is no need to tear one of its edges on stick sachets. The right way is to tear them down the middle. 
You may say it's not a big difference, but at least there's less mess with those torn paper bits. Two zips for one section can be an excellent pickpocket proof. You can put on a small lock on those zippers and make sure no one but you can open your backpack. If something got stuck in your teeth, it could be hard to have perfect results with loose floss. To increase the tension, tie it in a knot. With increased tension, you'll get rid of that basil between your teeth in no time. A tiny hole on the bottom of a padlock is there to drain water to help avoid corrosion. Plus, it's the most convenient place to lubricate a padlock. A drop of oil in there will make it open and close easier. A tiny plastic disc under a bottle lid is what makes soda sparkling. While the lid keeps the liquid inside, this plastic disc holds the gases inside. Without it, it would just be sweet water. It's a myth that the red side of the eraser is for pencil and the blue one is for ink. The blue one gets rid of mistakes on thicker types of paper only. It works both for pencil and even ink, but make sure the paper is really thick. But that blue little thing can do so much more. It can polish your jewelry, clean your electronics, for example, the screen of your cell phone. You know those irritating sticker residues that won't peel off? Eraser helps there too. So as with cleaning scuffed up suede or dirt you have on your walls. Glass bottles usually have a kind of indent on the bottom called a punt. It's handy for those who pour drinks in the glass. The bottle won't slip from the hands like this. A cotton pads pack has those strings on it to hang on some hook or holder. There is no need to untighten and tighten the pack again. Look at the bottom. It has a perforated line. Tear along it and just pull out a cotton pad from a hanging pack. If you lick a Nintendo cartridge, you'll notice they leave a revolting, sour, bitterish aftertaste in your mouth. They're covered with denatonium benzoate, aka one of the most disgusting flavors. Bottles have long necks for a reason. Hold the neck, not the bottle if you want to enjoy a cold drink. The same goes for fancy glasses. Their stem saves any drink from overheating. So hold it right. A button on the reverse side of a shirt collar is needed to hold a tie in place. Anyway, slim ties, which this button was designed for, are not that popular today. So this button is only an element of design. Women's shirts oddly have buttons on the left because some women used to have maids who would help them dress up. It was convenient for maids to button the shirts with the button on the left. Silica gel can often be found in different things you buy, like bags, shoes, and many others. It's meant to absorb excess moisture, so anytime your shoes are a bit wet, just throw in a sachet with silica gel. You are probably using shampoo wrong all the time. Well, the main thing you should know is that you don't apply it directly on your hair. You gotta apply it onto the roots only. The foam that you make is enough to clean your hair. Notebook margins were invented to protect people's notes. People used to co-live with rats and those rodents nibbled on paper pretty often. Still, they weren't able to gnaw on more than the space left on the margins. Red cups you saw at parties can measure liquids. The bottom line equals 1 ounce, the second line equals 5 ounce, and the third line equals 12 ounces. A little arrow next to the refueling indicator on the car's dashboard indicates which side of the vehicle has fuel tank openings. It's useful when you need to refuel a rented car. Roadside rumble strips come in handy if someone wants to drive at night since they prevent falling asleep. Whenever a car bumps into these strips, the driver feels vibration and hears quite a loud noise. Rings used to be more than a stylish accessory. The nobility used rings as a seal. Archers wore rings to protect their fingers from bowstring injuries, while needlewomen from needle pricks. As for rings, three rings on a phone jack are not part of the design. They represent different functions. If your audio jack has three of them, it means your device can produce stereo sound and your earphones have the microphone function. Kings depicted on playing cards are real historical characters. Spades, King David. Clubs, Alexander the Great. Hearts, Charles the Great. Diamonds, Julius Caesar. We tore off post-it notes incorrectly all this time. If you tear them off from below, they will stick off before long. But if you tear them off on the side, along the sticky line, it will hold on to the wall much longer. A lint roller is good at removing those tiny fibers, but you can also use it to clean other stuff. For example, when you want to remove the dirt from the utensil tray in your dishwasher. Simply take your sticky lint roller and put it into each compartment, and all crumbs, dirt, and leftovers, they're all gone. There's a number put on the side of many cosmetic products. It isn't picked randomly. 
It tells you how long your product will last after you've opened it. If you prefer to buy the milk in those plastic containers, you've probably seen those big circles on the side. These circles absorb the shock if you drop the milk on the floor, and also give some extra room so the container can expand. That's how you can see if the milk's turned bad without tasting it. It's sometimes irritating when you see you haven't used the entire stick of deodorant. There's a little bit more left, but it's hard to reach it. Okay, the trick is easy. Unscrew the bottom, take a pencil, and force it underneath that moving platform. That way, you'll push what's left of deodorant out. Two flat prongs you can see on standard plugs used in North and Central America make sense. But how about those holes near the tips? Thanks to them, the outlet firmly grips the plug so that it won't loosen or fall out of the socket. The second thing about the holes is that they allow you to wire electric power directly to the prongs, so you don't even have to use classical electrical outlets. So, if you need to get electrical power via direct wires, yep, the holes we got over there make the entire job much easier. Airplane windows have little holes too, and they're one of the essential features for a plane to fly safely. They protect people from outside pressure and generally balance the pressure on the windows when the plane takes off. A pasta spoon has a hole in its handle, which can definitely be helpful when you grab pasta and want to let water drain out. However, it also comes as a good measuring tool since the hole fits around one serving of pasta. Sometimes, things have a specific purpose, but you can always give them more rolls. For instance, if you want to eat some applesauce, but you don't have a spoon, just take the lid, twist the end to turn it into a handle, and make a scoop. Yum! You can train finger agility by catching noodles and rice with chopsticks from the corners of the Asian food boxes. Or you can expand the box and then it will become a plate. According to one theory, funny fluffy hat balls appeared in the 18th century on the caps of French sailors. They were tired of banging their heads against low ship ceilings and ledges and had created these pom-poms. Trailers used to be shown not before movies but after. Just think about how it's called. The word trailer means trailer to something. To a car, for example. Wood hangers still occupy a large part of the market because cedar wood, which hangers are made of, contains natural oils which repel moths, thereby preserving your things. To see if the boiled egg was fresh or not, just peel it. The more difficult it is to clean, the fresher it is. There's one more egg trick. Try twisting it. If an egg spins steadily, it's boiled. If it spins slowly or not spin at all, it's raw. When you're hungry or peckish, the kitchen is no doubt your favorite place to be. And you probably think you know your kitchen pretty well. In actuality, maybe not as well as you might think. You see, there are quite a few hidden secrets in your kitchen you're likely unaware of. First, we're going to take a look at something with holes in it. Now, we're not talking about Swiss cheese, though now you mention it, all this kitchen talk is making me hungry. Instead, take a look at the knives in your kitchen. You may notice that some of them have holes or dimples across the blade. You won't just find these features on one type of blade either. There are quite a few knives in your kitchen that likely have these holes or dimples. These can include the paring knife, the bread knife, and of course, everyone's favorite kitchen knife, the chef's knife. This feature isn't just decorative, though. There are a few excellent reasons for these holes and dimples. One of the main reasons is to reduce cutting friction. Think about it. Not all foods are easily sliced. Say you're trying to make a delicious pumpkin curry. Of course, you've got your main ingredient. Maybe you want to add some carrot, among other vegetables, all of which are pretty thick and hard to cut through. Pick yourself a knife with some holes in it. Those holes will help reduce the friction between that tough-to-slice food and your blade. These knives will also be lighter and therefore kinder on your wrist if you plan on cutting food for an extended time. The holes in your blade mean less steel, which means less weight, so you'll be making cleaner cuts in your food with ease. Another use for these holes is to hang your knives up significantly larger ones that are harder to store in a drawer. Having it hung up at arm's length of the kitchen bench for a commonly used knife like a meat cleaver will also be convenient. Of course, when you're cutting your food, you want to be doing it so on a chopping board, which, you guessed it, has a kitchen secret of its own. 
You'll notice, in most chopping boards, there's also a hole at the top of the board. Sure, this can be handy for when you need to carry it around or hang it up in your kitchen, as you did with your cleaver. But there's an additional purpose behind this feature, which probably hasn't occurred to you before. Once you've sliced up your herbs and vegetables, all that delicious flavor you're going to be adding to your dish, hover the hole at the top of the chopping board over the pot, pan, or whatever it is you're cooking in. Take your knife and gently push your ingredients through the hole for a clean transfer from the board. Give it a try! A clean kitchen is a happy kitchen. No, I'm sorry, I was just cutting some onions. But did you know there is, in fact, a secret way to cut onions without the tears? First of all, it's important to know that your onion isn't a hooligan. That's not why you end up crying when you cut into it. The onion skin contains amino acids, and when you cut into it, the chemicals produced from the damage you incur are released into the air and end up stinging your eyes. Kind of like payback. The best way to stifle the production of these tear-inducing chemicals is to cool the onion, either by freezing it or running it under cold water. Either way, you should now be able to cut through your onion with dry eyes and a smile. Keep the water running for this upcoming kitchen secret, and we need to fill the ice cube trays next. It seems almost impossible to refill your ice cube trays without making a complete mess of the water. But the design of your standard ice cube tray lets you fill it with ease and a dry kitchen bench. Rather than filling each well one by one, direct the water onto the flat area in between four ice cube wells. It'll channel the water evenly into each well without overfilling and splashing over the sides. If you're after a speedier method of filling your ice cube tray, tilt it onto an angle and run the water from the top two wells. The water will run down the tray like a waterfall and fill up each well with speed and relative cleanliness. Of course, it's still a challenging journey carrying your ice cube tray from the kitchen tap to the freezer. We haven't discovered a secret for that yet, other than, well, an automatic ice cube maker. Now, let's get out of the freezer and heat things up a bit. However, did you know that spicy food isn't actually hot? At least not in the traditional sense of the word. A chemical compound in hot peppers called capsaicin tricks your brain into experiencing that burning sensation in your mouth and throat. So, no need to worry, you are not really on fire. Though, it may feel like it. Your first instinct is to probably grab a tall glass of water and wash it down like you're dousing a house fire. But you do not want to do this. The water will only spread the capsaicin around more and make it worse. Instead, dairy is your secret best friend when you need relief from an overly spicy pepper. Most milk products contain a protein called casein, which can help wash away the capsaicin. So, as long as you have a glass of milk candy, go ahead and test yourself by seasoning your meal with some challenging spices. Speaking of seasoning, the most common seasoning ingredient to any meal is undoubtedly salt. But have you ever grabbed the half-full salt shaker, turned it upside down, and despite shaking it and tapping the bottom, barely any grains come out? Hmm. Sooner or later, salt starts to clump together. It tends to happen because salt absorbs water vapor in the air, and eventually, it can attract enough that the salt partially dissolves and sticks together. Well, the secret solution to this has been under your nose this whole time, and you probably never realized it. Have you ever noticed some grains of rice in the salt shaker on the table at your favorite restaurant? They're not there to add flavor. It's done because the rice absorbs water even faster than the salt, keeping the salt dry for longer. You can do this with the salt in your kitchen, too. Just add some uncooked long grain rice to your shaker, and you'll notice your salt coming out of it with ease from now on. But now, let's talk about something you might be flavoring with your now easy to use salt shaker, or rather, what tends to sprout from it. Potatoes are one of the most diverse foods on the planet. As Samwise Gamgee once put it, boil them, smash them, stick them in a stew. But if you don't get around to cooking your potatoes as fast as a hobbit surely would, you'll likely notice some shoots start to sprout. Soon enough, your potato looks like something out of a scary alien movie. It's not an unnatural process, however. Like most things, reproduction is part of a potato's cycle of existence, and sprouting is part of the process of creating a new potato. 
The speed at which your potato starts sprouting its shoots depends on its exposure to light, temperature, humidity levels, and how long it is left dormant for. So, if it's been sitting around for a while, it's likely going to have some sprouts. It's excellent if you plan to plant your potato. Of course, this is not so much the case if you plan to eat it. However, a secret to preventing potatoes from sprouting too early is to store them with your apples. The apple's ethylene gas prevents the sprouting process for longer. But don't store your potatoes with your onion. No, they won't make the potatoes cry, but they will have the opposite effect and cause them to sprout. So you see, sprouts on a potato aren't nearly as unsavory as mold on bread. When the bread is fresh, however, one of the most popular uses is to create toast. Almost every home has a toaster. Mine does. It might surprise you to know that there's likely a secret compartment inside your very own toaster. What's inside the compartment may not be too exciting, but it happens to be a critical feature that not many people know exists. It's the crumb tray, where, as the name suggests, all the crumbs and debris from your toast end up here. To find this hidden feature, you need to look for it between your toaster's upper and lower body. Now, it's essential to keep this tray clean. Not only does it keep your kitchen cleaner, but it also reduces the risk of your toaster being a fire hazard. Well, that would be crummy. Those are some unveiled kitchen secrets we bet you never knew. Now you're ready to reacquaint yourself with your kitchen and make a meal with all these handy secrets in mind. Yep, now I'm hungry. If you've ever gotten bored while waiting in a car like I have, you might have played around with a headrest. Yep, you can pull them off, and they'll come right off relatively easily. It seems useless at first, but that's something you'll want to do if you're ever trapped in a car and need to break a window to get out, like I do. Even a box of aluminum foil has its secret. On the side of the box, you can see a small tab you can push in. So simple, but that's what actually holds the roll of foil in place. This tab makes it way easier to unroll a sheet and tear it off without any frustration. Ever wondered why gripping a certain tool, handle, or even a pen kind of feels more secure when it's coated with a rubbery material? The keratin of the outer layer of the human skin is rough and stiff at a small scale. So let's say you have a polished metal or glass which is stiff but also a smooth and impenetrable surface. When you encounter that, the actual contact area is small, as is the friction at the beginning. Your sweat pores secrete moisture, which is why the keratin gets hydrated and becomes softer. Because of that, it requires many seconds for the contact area to increase to the same value it reaches almost right away with some soft materials like rubber. This mechanism might be used by our tactile senses when we want to identify materials. Now, the pom-poms on beanies and other hats have their purpose. And it's not just to look cute and fluffy. Well, at least they did have a purpose. One of the theories says French sailors used to wear hats with pom-poms so they wouldn't hurt their heads on the ship when the weather got rough. Yup, the ceilings of the ship were really low. When the waves were too big, bang, you could easily hit your head on the ceiling. So the pom-poms came in handy. Now they're just a cute addition to our winter caps. That mysterious drawer under the oven, the one where you keep all your kitchen gear you just don't know where else to put? Well, you used it well in that case, but the drawer was originally designed for keeping your meals warm, at least until you're ready to serve them. And that space under your lower cabinets that protrude slightly and can't be lifted? This area is also called a toe kick. It's the reason why you can stand closer to the counter while cooking. Also, the doors of the cabinets are off the ground, so they'll swing over your toes. The cabinet under the sink isn't for storage either. Maybe that's where you keep your cleaning products, but its real purpose is to give you access if your sinks leak and you need to do some plumbing work. That weird little hole at the top of a lollipop stick you can see after finishing a candy is not a whistle. Mm -mm. It has something to do with the manufacturing process. When pouring hot molten caramel into a mold, some of it will seep into this mysterious hole and harden. This way, the candy will stay on the stick and won't fall off. Keyboard letters aren't just randomly arranged the way they are. The first keyboard ever made belonged to the typewriter. 
Typists eventually got so good at their job, they started typing too quickly. So the key arms would get crosswired at some point and stuck. That's why manufacturers had to make the order of keys more random to intentionally slow down typists so they could keep the machine running. Do you like to let those brushes on the side of the escalators in malls polish your shoes? Believe it or not, that's not their main gig. The bristles are there for safety. People used to get their bags and clothes stuck in those escalators when they would stand too close to the sides. These nylon bristles kind of play with people's minds, and they keep their feet away from the escalator skirt panels and avoid accidents. Most people assume bobby pins have curves for fashion, which is why they mostly place it in their hair with the wavy side up. But those little waves are actually there to catch the underlying bulk of hair and grip the pin into place. So the wavy side should go down. You've probably noticed measuring tapes mostly come with a metal stub that ends with a small slot. If your hands are full of stuff, simply hang the slot on a nail for measurement. If you take a closer look, you'll see the stub is a little bit serrated on one side. This means you can use it to mark the points, so you don't even need a pencil. If you spend a lot of time in planes, you've probably noticed that little hole located at the bottom of the window. Nothing to be nervous about, it's what keeps us safe while flying high. It's something called a bleed hole. You can see right there in the middle of the pane of the three window panes that actually protect passengers from the outside pressure. This hole may be tiny, but it takes all that pressure off the outer one. The hole also gradually exposes it to cabin pressure, which helps with fixing pressure imbalances on the windows, if there are any. There's a number 57 staring at you from the middle of the Heinz ketchup bottle forever. According to the company, only 11% of people are aware the number really has nothing to do with the product label. It's actually a sweet spot where you can tap to get the sauce onto the plate. So, next time you want some ketchup, there's no need to bang the bottom off. Just hit this spot. Grooves on the bottom of cups are there to make cleaning them in the dishwasher more convenient. When you place your cups upside down, these grooves will allow the water to flow rather than stagnate. This way, the water won't spill onto your feet when you take the cups out. The grooves are there to allow cool air to flow beneath the cup, too. They also keep cups from cracking when they heat up after you pour hot beverages in. You probably noticed that little dot next to the camera on an iPhone and probably thought it was a flash. Nope, not a flash, but a microphone in charge of catching sounds when you're using the back camera. Next time you're looking for a quick bite and decide for fries at McDonald's, check that bendable flap near the top of the box. Some like to bend it towards the fries. That way, you can cover your fries up and keep them warm. But if you're not that patient, you can flip the flap backward and basically turn it into a makeshift plate for your fries. Just bend it down firmly enough. You don't want it to spring back up and spread the sauce all over you. Take it from me, it's messy. In the 1970s, people didn't want toothpaste just to keep their mouths healthy, but also to freshen their breath. Aquafresh decided to answer that call, so they added a blue stripe to their product. Since consumers started paying more attention to their teeth and gums, the company added a third red stripe to their paste. The paste now has three functions – freshening, cleaning, and plaque control. And yes, solid white toothpaste can offer the same benefits, but brands continue to add stripes to their paste anyway. Speaking of toothpaste, do you know those colors on the bottom of tubes? The colors don't mean anything in particular. They're there to help in the manufacturing by telling light sensors where the end of the tube is. Thanks to it, the machine can cut and seal the tube properly. Hand sanitizers are commonplace nowadays, and you can apply them in many other ways besides just cleaning your hands. It also works great when you want to remove stains from your clothes. Sanitizer breaks up oily, greasy spillages and does a great job as a degreaser. You can even use it as a deodorant if you get caught out on a hot day. The bottom of the bottle mostly has a small odd-shaped notch. It's called a deco lug, and without it, your bottle wouldn't look the way it does now. Such bottles are mass-produced in factories using machinery, and each of them looks the same. Since plastic bottles mostly needed artwork on them, manufacturers wanted to make sure the artwork always gets printed in the same position for each bottle. 
So they invented the Deco Lug, short for decorating lug. It actually holds each bottle at the same orientation in the machine that applies the artwork. Without it, workers would have to watch the whole process and adjust the bottles by hand. Metal buttons on jeans, also known as rivets, helped make the pockets more durable when miners would fill them with heavy tools. They're still helpful today, even if you don't store anything heavy in your pockets. Rivets strengthen the seams and make your jeans last longer. These tiny ridges on the letters F and J on a keyboard help us find the correct keys while touch typing. Also, since they're located in the center, they indicate the optimum position for typing. By the way, QWERTY was invented back in the early 1870s, and before that, the first keyboards were piano-like, with two rows of characters in alphabetical order. Don't blame that little lump on your computer cable for irritating you when it gets stuck somewhere for the umpteenth time. This cylinder, shapes and colors may vary, actually helps prevent interference from other signals, like those your phone emits. A hole in the handle of pots and even frying pans is designed as a holder for spoons if it's large enough. This way, sauce or whatever you stir drops back into the pan, and there's no more mess in the kitchen. As for handles, jerry cans have three of them. It's a smart designer move, so when you carry it alone, you use only the central handle to distribute the weight evenly. But your friend wants to help you out. Each of you grabs the side handle. A lack of privacy in public bathrooms, I mean that significant gap beneath where standard doors tend to be, is there for a reason. This way, people do their business faster, and there are fewer lines. Also, if something goes wrong, it's easy to find a person who needs help. In London, some poles kind of look like street lamps, but there are no bulbs. Well, their official name is stink pipes. And they're a thing of the past now, but they used to come in handy back in the 19th century. These hollow poles would take the air and explosive gases with bad smells up to prevent unwanted consequences. Books are printed on large sheets, so one sheet can fit in four printed pages. If a book has an odd quantity of printed pages, chances are you'll get a blank one for notes or the author's signature. Toothbrush bristles have two secret features. First, they fade over time, so when it gets less bright, you gotta buy a new one. Also, the bristles vary in length, and longer ones on one end can help clean the back teeth better. Toothpaste stripes aren't more than a marketing trick. In the 70s, a leading toothpaste brand introduced a blue stripe, claiming their toothpaste had double action. Solid white toothpaste has the same functions, though. Originally, golf balls were smooth. They have a dimpled surface now because players noticed that overused balls with damages flew better than brand new ones. At some point, manufacturers started producing balls with dimples. Windshield black dots, or frits, help dispense the sun glaring right into your eyes. This frame keeps the UV rays away and helps the glass heat up evenly, so it's sort of sunglasses for your car. The tab on the rearview mirror wasn't meant to hold your air freshener. It's a tumbler between day and night mode. It keeps the glare from other cars at bay, so you can't be distracted by headlights behind you. Colored dots on chip bags help manufacturers control the package color and show what ink color was used on the package. No big deal. Your microwave probably has a silence mode. Press 1 or 0 and hold. It might work. Also, there is sometimes a mute button you kept ignoring all this time. Anyway, there are no two identical microwaves, so a manual should come in handy. Grocery cart loops help organize all the stuff in your cart better so you can enjoy your supermarket trip. You don't want to put your brand new fancy white jacket in a cart next to carrots and onions, huh? Fruit stickers know everything about your apple's past. A five-digit number where the first number is nine is a good sign. It's an organic product. A four-digit number starting with three or four means it was conventionally farmed. If the number starts with an 8 and there are 5 digits, it's best to leave it on the shelf. Automatic lip liners and eye pencils have a sharpener installed in the package. The lid on the back part of the pencil doesn't only reveal the color. You can pull it out and sharpen up the product. If you don't feel like peeling an orange, cut it on top and bottom, make a slit on a side and just pull it open. 
Toothpicks sometimes have several grooves, and the section with grooves is a makeshift holder. It's easy to break the toothpick into two parts. A smaller one with a groove can be used to avoid contact with the table. You can also make a makeshift stand for disposable sushi sticks. They have a sort of lump at one side before you split the pair. Break that lump off, and when you want to take a sushi break, just place the stick on this stand. Most tubes are usually sealed with plastic film or foil, and opening it with your fingernails isn't the best idea. A point on the ointment tab easily opens even the most safely sealed tube. A dinner jacket has small pockets above regular ones. They're called ticket pockets, and gentlemen wearing such jackets can quickly pull the tickets before getting on a train. Yeah, you've heard before that a drawer beneath your oven is there for keeping the food warm if the guests are running late. Hey, you can also slow cook on lower temperatures in that drawer. All the bottles used to be of the same green color ones, but it turns out brown ones are way better at blocking UV light. Say no more. A dollar has its secrets too. A large letter with a rim shows which bank is responsible for issuing this bill. Twelve different Federal Reserve banks print all the money, so if you want to know where your money comes from, just look for these small codes. A1, Boston. B2, New York. C3, Philadelphia. D4, Cleveland. E5, Richmond. F6, Atlanta. G7, Chicago. H8, St. Louis. I9, Minneapolis. J10, Kansas City. K11, Dallas. 1112, San Francisco. Rough edges on the dimes aren't just about design. The weight of coins, made of precious metal, was used to show the coin's actual value. People would shave off the edges, spending the shaving coins with the same value, and melt the edges to make new coins. To avoid it, the minter added that pattern so people could tell if a coin was cut. Small dimples on the bottom of some cups keep them in place on wet surfaces, and it doesn't let the excess water accumulate while it's in a dishwasher. To enjoy fresh and soft peanut butter, store it upside down. This way, the oils don't stay on the bottom all the time and distribute evenly in the jar. Bath foam has a sort of thermoregulatory function. The bubbles keep the water hot so that you can enjoy your bath a bit longer. Disclaimer, it works for acrylic bathtubs only. Those made of metal lose heat rather fast, no matter how much foam you make. A doorknob made of brass, bronze, and some copper alloys has an anti-germ effect because of its metal properties. A small V-patch right at the bottom of the collar helps put on the sweater without losing any shape over time because it's made of a double layer of webbing material, just like waistbands and cuffs. To avoid spilling juice right onto your t-shirt, try pouring it from the other side of the carton. This way, it sloshes less, and it's easy to control. Triangular flaps on small juice cartons can help control unwanted spillage too. If you flip them and use them as handles for the carton, you won't press the package, so the juice won't be squeezed uncontrollably. All the disposable cups look the same. The secret here is the special shape that lets you enjoy your drink easily. The top is always wider for the nose to fit in while you're drinking, and the bottom is always narrower so anyone can hold it, even if the hand is small. Also, the width difference allows the cups to stack. You can use a mason jar directly onto the blender with a screw on top and make any shake you want without having to wash the blender jar. The only rule is to not put your device on max. There is no need to tear one of its edges on stick sachets. The right way is to tear them down the middle. You may say it's not a big difference, but at least there's less mess with those torn paper bits. Two zips for one section can be an excellent pickpocket proof. You can put on a small lock on those zippers and make sure no one but you can open your backpack. If something got stuck in your teeth, it could be hard to have perfect results with loose floss. To increase the tension, tie it in a knot. With increased tension, you'll get rid of that basil between your teeth in no time. A tiny hole on the bottom of a padlock is there to drain water to help avoid corrosion. Plus, it's the most convenient place to lubricate a padlock. A drop of oil in there will make it open and close easier. A tiny plastic disc under a bottle lid is what makes soda sparkling. 
While the lid keeps the liquid inside, this plastic disc holds the gases inside. Without it, it would just be sweet water. It's a myth that the red side of the eraser is for pencil and the blue one is for ink. The blue one gets rid of mistakes on thicker types of paper only. It works both for pencil and even ink, but make sure the paper is really thick. But that blue little thing can do so much more. It can polish your jewelry, clean your electronics, for example, the screen of your cell phone. You know those irritating sticker residues that won't peel off? Eraser helps there too. So as with cleaning scuffed up suede or dirt you have on your walls. Glass bottles usually have a kind of indent on the bottom called a punt. It's handy for those who pour drinks in the glass. The bottle won't slip from the hands like this. A cotton pads pack has those strings on it to hang on some hook or holder. There is no need to untighten and tighten the pack again. Look at the bottom. It has a perforated line. Tear along it and just pull out a cotton pad from a hanging pack. If you lick a Nintendo cartridge, you'll notice they leave a revolting, sour, bitterish aftertaste in your mouth. They're covered with denatonium benzoate, aka one of the most disgusting flavors. It prevents people from swallowing those cartridges. Bottles have long necks for a reason. Hold the neck, not the bottle if you want to enjoy a cold drink. The same goes for fancy glasses. Their stem saves any drink from overheating. So hold it right. A button on the reverse side of a shirt collar is needed to hold a tie in place. Anyway, slim ties, which this button was designed for, are not that popular today. So this button is only an element of design. All running shoes have an anti-blister system pre-installed. It's the extra hole on top of your sneakers. Make a loop with this hole, inserting the lace in backwards. Cross the laces and insert them into the loops. Then pull the laces down, creating a kind of lock. Some people like to hide the laces under the soles to make them totally invisible. Women's shirts oddly have buttons on the left because some women used to have maids who would help them dress up. It was convenient for maids to button the shirts with the button on the left. Silica gel can often be found in different things you buy, like bags, shoes, and many others. It's meant to absorb excess moisture, so anytime your shoes are a bit wet, just throw in a sachet with silica gel. You are probably using shampoo wrong all the time. Well, the main thing you should know is that you don't apply it directly on your hair. You gotta apply it onto the roots only. The foam that you make is enough to clean your hair. Notebook margins were invented to protect people's notes. People used to co-live with rats, and those rodents nibbled on paper pretty often. Still, they weren't able to gnaw on more than the space left on the margins. Red cups you saw at parties can measure liquids. The bottom line equals 1 ounce, the second line equals 5 ounce, and the third line equals 12 ounces. Detachable headrests in cars are all about safety. If you pull it out of a seat, you'll see two pretty sturdy bars. If you ever get locked or trapped in a car, you can get out of there smashing the window with these bars. A little arrow next to the refueling indicator on the car's dashboard indicates which side of the vehicle has fuel tank openings. It's useful when you need to refuel a rented car. Roadside rumble strips come in handy if someone wants to drive at night since they prevent falling asleep. Whenever a car bumps into these strips, the driver feels vibration and hears quite a loud noise, so the driver can't help but wake up instantly. Rings used to be more than a stylish accessory. The nobility used rings as a seal. Archers wore rings to protect their fingers from bowstring injuries, while needlewomen from needle pricks. As for rings, three rings on a phone jack are not part of the design. They represent different functions. If your audio jack has three of them, it means your device can produce stereo sound and your earphones have the microphone function. Kings depicted on playing cards are real historical characters. Spades, King David. Clubs, Alexander the Great. Hearts, Charles the Great. Diamonds, Julius Caesar. We tore off post-it notes incorrectly all this time. If you tear them off from below, they will stick off before long. But if you tear them off on the side, along the sticky line, it will hold on to the wall much longer. A lint roller is good at removing those tiny fibers, but you can also use it to clean other stuff. For example, when you want to remove the dirt from the utensil tray in your dishwasher. 
Simply take your sticky lint roller and put it into each compartment, and all crumbs, dirt, and leftovers, they're all gone. There's a number put on the side of many cosmetic products. It isn't picked randomly. It tells you how long your product will last after you've opened it. Here's why it has an open jar for a graphic symbol. If you prefer to buy the milk in those plastic containers, you've probably seen those big circles on the side. These circles absorb the shock if you drop the milk on the floor, and also give some extra room so the container can expand. That's how you can see if the milk's turned bad without tasting it. It's sometimes irritating when you see you haven't used the entire stick of deodorant. There's a little bit more left, but it's hard to reach it. Okay, the trick is easy. Unscrew the bottom, take a pencil, and force it underneath that moving platform. That way, you'll push what's left of deodorant out. Two flat prongs you can see on standard plugs used in North and Central America make sense. But how about those holes near the tips? Thanks to them, the outlet firmly grips the plug so that it won't loosen or fall out of the socket. The second thing about the holes is that they allow you to wire electric power directly to the prongs, so you don't even have to use classical electrical outlets. So, if you need to get electrical power via direct wires, yep, the holes we got over there make the entire job much easier. Airplane windows have little holes too, and they're one of the essential features for a plane to fly safely. They protect people from outside pressure and generally balance the pressure on the windows when the plane takes off. A pasta spoon has a hole in its handle, which can definitely be helpful when you grab pasta and want to let water drain out. However, it also comes as a good measuring tool since the hole fits around one serving of pasta. If you take a box of aluminum foil, you'll see tabs you can press on the side. They keep the foil straight and prevent it from rolling. It's also easier to tear off some amount of foil thanks to those tabs. Sometimes, things have a specific purpose, but you can always give them more rolls. For instance, if you want to eat some applesauce, but you don't have a spoon, just take the lid, twist the end to turn it into a handle, and make a scoop. Yum! You can train finger agility by catching noodles and rice with chopsticks from the corners of the Asian food boxes. Or you can expand the box and then it will become a plate. According to one theory, Funny, fluffy hat balls appeared in the 18th century on the caps of French sailors. They were tired of banging their heads against low ship ceilings and ledges and had created these pom-poms. Trailers used to be shown not before movies, but after. Just think about how it's called. The word trailer means trailer to something. To a car, for example. Wood hangers still occupy a large part of the market because cedar wood which hangers are made of, contains natural oils which repel moths, thereby preserving your things. To see if the boiled egg was fresh or not, just peel it. The more difficult it is to clean, the fresher it is. There's one more egg trick. Try twisting it. If an egg spins steadily, it's boiled. If it spins slowly or not spin at all, it's raw. If you're searching for a new hobby, you've come to the right video. Who wouldn't want to make their own dresses, right? But it takes some solid sewing skills as well as discipline. And by discipline, I mean being tidy and knowing where you keep everything, because you'll need to know where everything is before you begin. Who has time to search for every little thing around the house, am I right? And as for how to improve your skills, we got you covered on that too. If you want everything to be orderly and seamless, why not try the hair comb hack? Sorry, Little Mermaid, a fork won't do the trick for this. If you want to turn things inside out to hide any stitches, this method can help you achieve that. If you're searching for ways to give your boring old cardigan a makeover, watch this. This beautiful flower pattern will take it to a whole new level. Almost better than brand new, it's totally giving off some elegant and modern vibes. Gets 10 points from me. Whoa, someone needs to keep their hands steady. But don't be so hard on yourself, you're not a surgeon. This tape hack is all you need to achieve better results. Sometimes knowing one little trick is enough to change everything. It makes such a dramatic difference. What if I told you that you don't need to spend any money on sewing patterns? 
I know, I know, they are usually not that pricey, but still. Many a little makes a nickel, am I right? A plastic bag is great for preparing a pattern because it's see-through. This way, you can take measurements for both the front and back simultaneously. And voila, it'll be the perfect fit. I told you straws come in real handy, huh? Now add an elastic band to the formula and create some magic. A paper clip will help you keep things smoother and more seamless. Time to see everything in action. You might want to watch this part a few times to really get the hang of it. That's a great fit! Abracadabra Alakazam! Achieving perfect corners when you're sewing is tricky. But you sure can achieve that with a piece of chalk and some folding skills. It might look confusing, but don't worry, it's not origami level hard. Let's just cut the excess part. And there you have it. No muss, no fuss. You just need to make sure you get the right measurements beforehand to fit the furniture. But the best part? No need to get out of your comfortable chair to get stuff. If you don't make a solid knot before you begin, all the sewing action you do might actually go to waste. One way to show you're a real pro at sewing is by doing invisible stitches. Oh, you can't really show that though. My bad. Here's one way to make use of your old grater. With just a few magnets, paper clips, and straws, you can make a portable sewing station out of it. Take your hobby with you wherever you go. Grab a wire because we're going to show you how you can upgrade any dress or top you want. Well, at least they're sleeves. But even such a small change makes a huge difference in the style, wouldn't you agree? No zipper is too long when you know the right technique to adjust the length. By the way, here's a cool fact about zippers for you. They were invented back in 1893. Initially, they were used on shoes and boots to make wearing them faster, but slowly they gained favor and made their way onto garments. Are you one of those people who get stressed about not being able to cut in a straight line and as a result always ends up cutting in zigzags? Laser scissors got you covered. It's always heartbreaking to see that your favorite accessory will not be able to serve you anymore. But here's some advice. Don't throw them away, transform them. You can create any design you want if you know the right technique. This is giving some Finding Nemo vibes. By the way, did you know that it was the first Pixar movie to win the Best Animated Feature Oscar Award? A broken rope is no problem at all. Just check out this super easy method to attach both ends back together. Trust the process, it's going to be even stronger than before. Kind of like a sailor's knot, isn't it? Let's talk about hoodies, the coziest and the most comfortable piece of clothing out there. Although it's currently impossible to pinpoint the origin of hoodies, certain theories suggest that they actually date back to over 3,000 years ago. Hooded sweatshirts were initially used in the 1930s to shield U.S. warehouse workers from harsh New York winters. If you own an oversized hoodie but wish to turn it into a more fitting one, you can always do that without ruining it for good. Achieving straight lines is hard, especially if you have shaky hands. But you can always make use of a pen to keep things orderly as well as stable. The results will look so much more professional thanks to this hack. As I show you one of the easiest ways you can open buttonholes, how about we take a trip through the history of buttons too? You know how women's buttons are sewn onto the left side of the garment? This is because buttons were so expensive and only wealthy women could afford them. And this way, their maids could dress them more easily.
But you know what? If you didn't sew the buttons onto the correct side, I don't think anybody would notice anyway. The invisible stitching technique may not work here, but that doesn't mean we cannot fix this. With a little bit of patience and imagination, you can give your old and torn garment a glow up. You can even customize it by writing your personal motto on the front with chic beads. Ain't nobody can claim this as theirs. It literally has your name on it. Just make sure to keep everything tight to achieve professional results. Things might not go according to plan all the time. Especially if you're doing a creative project like this, you might get stuck, literally. It's times like these that knowing the right trick can save your work. Everything looks seamless now. Uh-oh, some stains can be really hard to remove, even if you have the right cleaning tools. That's when thinking outside the box will save your clothes. Such an ugly stain can be turned into the most beautiful butterfly, for example. But there's no limit to the things you can create. If you're up for the task, you can give that butterfly some friends, too. And the thing is, you don't need to wait for a stain to ruin your jeans to give them a little bit of color and life. Can't forget about the antennas with which real butterflies pick up food scents along with the sensors on their feet. We have another tough stain here. Look at it this way. You got yourself a new opportunity to create a sewing masterpiece. But since you already know the butterfly effect, let's try something new this time. You can always leave it like this to sort of have a fringe look. But I got something way more magical looking in mind. These flowers won't need your attention and care like the rest of the plants in your house, so that's always a plus. I would still be careful and wash the shirt in the sensitive program though, just to make sure no harm comes to the cute little flower. So, take a small piece of fabric of a specific color and tie it to your luggage. This way, you'll save a lot of time waiting for your luggage to arrive because most people have similar ones, but now you can instantly recognize yours. It's annoying how often it feels like so many stick deodorants go to waste. You start feeling the container uncomfortably rubbing against your skin even when plenty of deodorants are still left. But there is an easy trick to use the last bit in there. Unscrew the bottom and force a pencil underneath that moving platform to push another inch of deodorant out. That gives you a few more weeks to use it. Just don't poke yourself with a pencil. That's the piss. You're running out of your favorite hand cream, but it seems the tube still has some. If you cannot push hard enough to get the rest of it, take scissors, cut the tube of cream in half, and use one more day. When you wrote something on the paper and want to cross it out and not allow anyone to read it, don't just scribble over those words. Simply write random words and letters over the original and no one will understand what the actual writing was about. I learned that one at spy school. <laughs> if you often need something to prop up your phone, you don't have to look for random objects. Just take your sunglasses. They have a perfect shape of a phone holder. Use the inside of the toilet paper when you're at a public toilet. It's better to avoid covering the seat of a bathroom, too. When you flush a toilet, germs spring around and spray over the roll of nearby toilet paper, too. But if you have your own paper tissues, it'll be even better to use them. Greek yogurt flip cups. You probably want something extra when eating your Greek yogurt. Like honey, you mostly get a tasty dollop of fruit and cookie crumbs. But those additional compartments are really narrow, so you can't even reach what's inside unless you have some tiny spoon. Well, check the word on the lid. It says flip. Yep, flip those small compartments over so their contents can mix with your yogurt. Bon appetit! Business cards are so easy to lose. Next time someone gives you one, take a picture of it just in case. 
If you lose it somewhere in your bag, at least you know where you can always find it. If you're not sure how to iron a button-up shirt, just flip it inside out. That way you'll easily pass across the button side with your iron. Sometimes, even though you have a bag inside your trash bin, add the old newspaper to the bottom just in case. The paper will absorb food juices so they won't break through the bag and leave your bin messy. When you travel, make a bar of scented soap one of the essentials you take everywhere. Put it in the bag or compartment where you keep your dirty clothes. That will help to keep it smelling nice, at least until you find a place where you can wash it. There's a trick in how you can check if your batteries are good or bad. Just drop them on a table from around 6 inches. They're okay if they give just one tiny bounce and fall over. If not, if they continue bouncing around more, they're either on their way out or already dead. When you're taking a selfie and want to look more natural, squint your eyes. Not everybody feels comfortable in front of the camera, so you may look stiff. But this way, your smile will be more genuine in the photos. We all know how frustrating it is to have a container that doesn't fit in the sink, and you still need to fill it with water. Just use a dustpan, a clean one, of course. Place it in a sink and enjoy this brilliant new way in your bathroom. If you wrote down a recipe or had a cookbook and don't feel like going to your table and checking it out all the time, take a pants hanger. Hang it somewhere in your kitchen to continue with slicing, chopping, and cooking, and quickly check if you're following all the necessary steps. If you're not a fan of the taste of stale cereal, Here's a trick that will help you keep them fresh even if they remain in the box for a longer time. Don't close the top panels of your cereal like you usually do with a square box. Pack it so it reminds you more of a milk carton. First, collapse three of the four pieces of cardboard to make an opening. Out of two long strips, leave one turned up. Now tuck the two side panels inward into a V-shape. To hold it like this, pinch the unfolded flap of your cardboard into the opposite flap. Now crimp the opening to keep it in place. With a tighter seal, your cereal will remain fresh for a longer time. Place a wooden spoon across a boiling pot of liquid. That way, you'll prevent it from boiling over. We all sometimes lend our stuff to friends and forget who took what. Take a picture of them holding the item so you remember where your things are. Chargers can sometimes bend if you carry them around in a bag. Take a spring from one of your old pens and wrap it around the critical part of the cable. It will prevent the cable from breaking. Now, we all love pancakes, sure, but preparing them can be really frustrating because it's almost impossible not to make a mess. Hmm, almost. If you use an old ketchup bottle and fill it with pancake mix, you'll certainly avoid most of the cleaning after it. And have a nice treat, too. If you like going to the beach but are often afraid someone might take your stuff, try this trick. Take an old bottle of sun lotion and clean it out. Place your phone, keys, and money inside and close it. Looks casual enough for people around to think you don't have any valuables within your stuff. If you're having a barbecue gathering with your friends and looking for a practical way to serve condiments, here's a simple solution – a muffin tin. Less mess because you'll cut down on dishwashing, plus you save space at the table and keep things more organized. How to finally be able to differentiate your keys that all look so similar? Take different nail polishes. Now, you'll only need to remember which color is for which door. We all sometimes forget to put deodorant on before leaving the house. No worries, just pat your armpits dry and go with hand sanitizer. It's an excellent way to deal with bacteria that are actually a true reason for that unpleasant smell when sweating. Now, if you're keeping count, that's the second tip today about your armpits. Just saying. When you want to amplify the sound and don't own speakers or any other equipment that would help you, just place your phone in a glass jug. Woohoo! Party! Save a couple of toilet paper rolls and use them as cuffs so your wrapping paper doesn't unroll and make a mess. Any fans of iced cappuccinos or iced coffee here? Prepare some coffee and make frozen coffee cubes. That way, your beverage won't get watered down when you want to make it colder. When mobile phones just turned up, it looked like designers wanted to make them as small as possible. 
But over time, phones got so many other options besides just texting and calling. So many new models, for example, the latest iPhones, have a bigger screen now. It seems like now you need to use both hands for typing once again. Unless you change the keyboard setting, open the keyboard, any app is good, and look for the global icon or the emoji icon. Press it and hold it down until you see the keyboard menu pop up. Do you see those three keyboard icons at the bottom? Pick the left one if you're right-handed, so the keyboard on your phone will compress itself to the left side. The keyboard will move toward the right side if you take the right side. Or go to Settings, then General, choose Keyboard, and then One-Handed Keyboard. You get the same result. It's a hot summer day, and all you want is a cool, refreshing drink. You jump into your car and grab that bottle you left in the front seat. No! You can boil some lunch in it, and that's how hot it is. Luckily, your car has a small built-in fridge. Yep, in most cars, you can open the vent in your glove compartment and let the air from the air conditioning inside. Ice cream wouldn't survive there for long, but it's definitely cold enough to cool down some drinks or keep your sandwiches from going bad. Oops, it looks like that bottled water isn't the only thing boiling in the car. If your engine boils because of heat or some technical issue, turn on the stove at maximum temperature and let the heat from the engine move inside the car. Yep, you heard me right. It will help lessen the burden on the engine's cooling system. You know it's working if you see the temperature gauge back in the neutral position. It can also be a temporary fix until you get to the mechanic. So you need to replace a wheel, but the wrench doesn't seem long enough for that? You have to lean way too much and your back won't thank you for that. You can extend it by using a tube. When you turn the wrench into a telescopic one, it will be easier to unscrew the nuts using your own weight. Don't have a funnel in your car, but need to add some oil to the engine? It's really important to always have the right amount so your engine doesn't overheat. If you don't want to spill it all over yourself, a screwdriver will come to the rescue. Hold it at the right angle. The oil will flow smoothly right inside. Don't forget to clean the screwdriver afterwards. You're driving at night with hardly any traffic on a bumpy road. Suddenly, you feel you've run into something. It's a special device with metal tubes. Then, you notice some suspicious car starts following you. Be careful! Their plan is to follow you until you stop, which is going to be pretty soon. If they had pierced the tire with a screw, the hole would have been closed, and you could have driven a long way with it. But the metal tube allows the air to leave the tire really fast, and that's the whole point. Once you get out of the car to fix the problem, the bad guys might offer you help and then try to steal the car. In case there's an air leak in your tire and you don't have a proper repair kit in your trunk, don't remove the entire wheel to be able to move. You can use a screw to close up the leak like this. It will last for a short time as you head to the nearest mechanic. Never park your car under trees in bloom. And no, it's not just because birds living up there might leave you a surprise. Many trees in the summer produce juice, resin, and fruit and berry sticky grains that can land directly on your car. This substance can gradually damage the paint and varnish coating. If you don't have a chance to wash the car for a while, the stain will remain. You can use a soap solution or special liquids to wash it off if this happens. Just mix soap and water in a spray bottle and give it a good cleaning. This solution will also work just fine if there's bug residue on your car. When cleaning, make sure not to press too hard, not to damage the car overcoat. Confession time! Are you one of those people who like to save money and use regular water instead of antifreeze for washing the windshield in the warm season? Well, you should know that when the cold comes, the tank inside your car can deform or even crack. Some car drivers use antifreeze when the temperature goes below zero at night. But during the day, when the temperature is above zero, the liquid starts to smell. So here's the solution. Mix one part antifreeze with half part distilled water. Now you'll use just enough antifreeze and it won't damage the tank. I'm sure you take good care of your car and clean the windows. But do you ever clean the rubber molding on the windows? Even if the car is clean, that molding is a dust magnet. When the dust gets out, it scratches the windshield like sandpaper. After a while, it can leave deep scratches on the windshield that you won't be able to get rid of. So, better safe than sorry. 
Roll the windows up. Wipe away the dust you can see with a microfiber cloth. Put some automotive shampoo on the molding. Scrub it in using a toothbrush, then wipe it away with a damp microfiber towel. You don't want any residue to stay behind the window or the trim. See if it's clean enough and give it another go if necessary. You can also check out the interior rubber trim and take care of it as well. Have you seen one of those videos where someone opens a car with a plunger? Well, it's not that possible. You'd have to use around 10 plungers with force at the same time to force the lock open. So, invite 9 friends over and give it a go if you're interested. When you're traveling down a highway or a countryside road, little pebbles might come your way. They aren't that dangerous and you might not even notice the damage. But if you look closely, you'll find hardly noticeable traces on your headlight. If you plan to stay on the road for a long time and rain catches you on the way, your headlights might fog up because of that damage. To fix them somehow before you get them properly repaired, use a piece of transparent tape. It will prevent the moisture from getting in through the gap and the headlights won't fog up. Sticky air fresheners aren't the best choice for your car. Those scent stickers have active chemical components that make your car smell like cinnamon or a tropical breeze. If your car stays in the sun for too long and those components find a way out, they can damage the paint or make it dull. Even if it just stays intact for a long time, evaporation of this liquid over months can leave a stain where it was. The paint will fade or go bubbly. If you don't want that to happen, you can make your own car scent. Fill a mason jar with baking soda halfway and add 20 drops of your favorite essential oil. Cover it with a lid and shake it well. Take the lid off the jar and circle it on a cardboard. Cut the circle out and punch holes in the cardboard with a small nail. Now, cover the jar with a cardboard lid and secure it. To keep your car fresh, you can keep this DIY air freshener in the cup holder or under the seat. If you get stuck in mud, sand, or snow, don't panic. That rule actually works in many situations. Remember, there's always a way out. It also works in many cases. First of all, give your tires some room to maneuver. Move the steering wheel back and forth to achieve this. Go really slow to get some traction. Go from reverse to drive quickly, but no more than eight times not to damage the car. Deflate the tires, letting out about half of the air from them to increase their surface area. Then, dig out some space around them and use the tire jack to elevate the car and branches, boards, or even car floor mats for some extra traction. As you get out successfully, don't forget to inflate the tires back and drive slowly at first to get the excess mud off. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, 